I'm Jim Otte. On the program today, we're taking a look back at what happened one year ago this week when we first saw the first cases of the coronavirus here in Ohio. Soon schools and many businesses were shut down. Also looking forward to what's ahead for us as we recover from the health emergency. First, we're talking with Dr. Stephen Burdett at the Wright State University Boonshoff School of Medicine. What comes to mind when he thinks back to that beginning of all of this? So it's been a long, exhausting uh, year, um, but we've gotten through it and um, we're better off now because of it. I spent a lot of time, doctor, uh, going back and looking at the governor's briefings from a year ago. Uh, a lot of the assumptions that they had made about this virus back then, do they still hold? Did we find out that it's transmitted through the air, not really necessarily by touch, uh, that it affects older people predominantly and those people with um, compromised immune systems? Uh, so it seems like we were on the right track really in all of this from the beginning. Am I right? Absolutely. And even, you know, there's been a lot of pushback about the projections and the spike numbers. Our spike numbers, actually, the projections were right on. We were just about six months off. Our November and December and the first part of January, the case volumes were enormous. And this is what we were expecting last summer. And possibly because the virus just doesn't spread as efficiently outside. You know, people were naturally doing more social distancing when it's 90 degrees and sunny out as compared to, you know, around Thanksgiving and, and Christmas time. But so much of what we predicted was right. We just were probably off a little bit on the timing. And as you said, the spread is droplet. Um, you know, the social distancing, it's not perfect. But it absolutely works. Works. The masks are not perfect, but they absolutely, you know, decrease the spread. And you know, we were we we did a pretty good job in the end of uh, with a lot of the predictions. We were just off a little bit on the time. We're talking with Dr. Steve Burdett of Wright State University, the Boonshoff School of Medicine. For you personally, what has this year been like for so many people in the medical community that we've covered over the past year? Um, they're just completely burnt out, especially around that time when we had so many cases. You mentioned Thanksgiving. The number of cases grew dramatically over the holidays and then kind of uh, tapered off a little bit for the good. But what's it been like for you? December and first part of January were just... I don't want to say overwhelming because we got through it. We took care of the patients, but it was long hours. It was, um, again, stressful. Um, it was frustrating at times because, you know, you would move five people out of isolation and then there were seven more people to take those, you know, to take those beds and just not knowing when the end was. You know, not knowing that light at the end of the tunnel, was it a train or was it actually a light that the pandemic was going to be easing off? And so now that we've seen dramatic decreases in our numbers, you know, now that we're into the normalcy of dealing with this, it's nice to be able to breathe. Um, but it was December and January and the end of November were just completely overwhelming. Um, and it just meant you just had to work until the work was done. You know, there was... You know, you just you couldn't stop. OK, so recently the governor has uh, set up uh, uh, some metrics that are going to determine really what we all do in the future. And that is when we get to a certain level of cases, 50 per 100,000 is the way this is set up um, cases. The restrictions are start coming off um, in general. Where does that number come from? Do you know? And that standard, what do you think of it? So I think it's, you know, it. There is no exact science to this entire process. We are trying to figure this out and we are trying to balance the social side of it with the medical side of it. Um, I think 50 out of 100,000 is reasonable because we've got a lot of folks that have been um, previously infected. Um, we have a lot of people now that are getting vaccinated. And I will tell you that having taken care of thousands of people with COVID, we are not seeing very significant numbers of people with vaccinated fully vaccinated against the virus who are coming in with infection. Now, early on after the vaccine, you know, it takes a couple weeks for the vaccine to kick in. So we do see people who within that first 10 to 14 days do come down with COVID after their first shot, but it's really made a big difference. I mean, we are not seeing the nursing home volumes. And so the way the Ohio Department of Health is tracking, you know, looking for, you know, new diagnosis and whatnot, I do think the 50 per 100,000 is a reasonable 
goal. And I think that, again, taking the mandate away is beneficial um, for the overall good of the society. But I just want people to remember that even when the law no longer says you have to wear a mask, until the virus is gone, you know, it is still a good social thing to do to when you're around people, when you're out in public, you know, to wear your mask to protect your colleagues and to protect our friends and protect our family. Talking with Dr. Steve Burdett of Wright State University. Let's explore that now. If the governor says, I'm going to, at some point in the future, I'm going to lift that statewide mandate, uh, how do you convince most people to continue with um, what you would say would be the right thing to do? Wear your mask, keep your social distancing, wash your hands, avoid large crowds, all the things we've been doing for the last year. How do you make sure that people continue with this? Because, you know, it's not going to be like a light switch where oh, COVID's over, it's, we're done. Yeah, it is going to be, you know, it is going to be hard and it really is balancing um, the medicine with the the political side, which, again, I'm not a politician and I will uh, um, I will tread on that lightly. But I just I think that one thing we've learned in the hospital, especially, is we've taken care of healthcare workers and we have prevented infections in healthcare workers, not using the big fancy masks, not using all of the fancy protect personal protective equipment. We're using a lot of the same masks that, you know, you and I wear when we go out to eat, when we go out in public. And so to me, it's just a matter of people being socially responsible. And, you know, we're going to get to the point where if you're out in a park with your family, if you're on a jog, you don't need to wear a mask. I, again, you're not around anybody. But if you're walking through a mall, if you're going to sit down at your table at a restaurant, just we need to be, you know, socially conscious, protect the people because you might not be at risk, but that person you're walking by could be a cancer patient, could be somebody who has a poor immune system. And if they pick up the virus, then it could be very serious for them. And we are still seeing that our numbers are down dramatically, but we still have people on ventilators. We still have people that are critically ill just because of COVID. And we got to remember to keep those people in mind as we go forward. Do you have a sense as to how long that might continue? In other words, the governor's talking about weeks and weeks. Okay, good for the restrictions. But when we get past that, how long are we going to be with masks? The, the One of the politicians here at the state house has talked about, well, maybe we'll be with masks only during flu season in the future, uh, because there are some countries where you see them a lot, but after flu season, they take them back off again and it's all back to normal. Can you see that happening in the States? I can see it happening in the hospital. I mean, it is unbelievable how we have not seen, I no, shouldn't say that. It is totally believable because flu is prevented with masks. And the, we have not had a single case of flu that I have seen come through the hospital. And I saw data the other day that was like the thousand cases throughout the country. I mean, it is minuscule because of the masking. So in the hospital setting where I spend most of my time, I totally could see us getting to the point where healthcare workers mask for patient care between October and March. Every year we see patients who get influenza from their healthcare worker. And with influenza, you're contagious one day before the onset of symptoms. So we can prevent COVID, we can prevent influenza in the healthcare system by masking. So I do expect us in hospitals to potentially wear masks during a certain time of year when these viruses are very active. And then as you get into the summer months back down. From a public standpoint, you know, you're right. There are countries that mask all the time and that is just part of their culture. Um, I don't know that the American people are going to be willing to do that. And uh, I think that we're just gonna have to be very aggressive with the vaccine. You know, the early vaccines that we have for COVID are highly effective. We just need to have more of them and more are coming. You know, time will tell or time will produce more vaccines. But I think that once we get access for everybody to get the vaccine, that I think is when the masking requirements can really start to back down. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time in the program this morning. Always interesting. We'll check back at some point in the future as things get better. Thank you.